The Federal Executive Council has approved the creation of the Humanitarian and Poverty Alleviation Trust Fund under a governing board. The Minister of Humanitarian Affairs and Poverty Alleviation, Beta Edu, who stated this while briefing State House correspondents, said the fund is a flexible form of financing as an emergency response to humanitarian crisis and addressing poverty in Nigeria. The federal government hopes to raise at least $5 billion annually into the trust fund from various sources, including government, private sector, development partners, philanthropic individuals, and other innovative forms of pool funding. The governing board will include the Minister of Finance and other top government officials that may be relevant to the trust fund. I'm grateful to President Bola Ahmed Tinubu today for the approval given for the creation of the Humanitarian and Poverty Alleviation Trust Fund. This is a flexible form of financing that can help us get contributions from different sectors. So we're going to have contribution from government, of course, from the private sector, development partners, um, individuals, philanthropic individuals, and other innovative form of um, crowdfunding and pulling of funds together. This is to allow for emergency response to humanitarian crisis in Nigeria. Every other day, we hear about crisis, the floods, and the rest of it. We need to be able to um, respond adequately as a country. Um, beyond this, the issue of poverty elevation is one of the agendas of President Bola Ahmed Tinibu in his eight-point agenda, and we want to be able to tackle it headlong. How much are we looking at? Every year, we hope to be able to um, raise at least $5 billion within this um, fund. And this is from the various sources that I've mentioned and even more. The ministers of finance, education, and solid minerals also disclosed various approvals given by the executive council to their respective ministries, including financing to reduce the number of out of school children and the deployment of technology and security to curb illegal mining across the country. Financing for the Gulf Child, $700 million is the size of the current um, project. About the $10 billion. I had said that in terms of the, earlier today, that in terms of uh, the all important um, liquidity in the foreign exchange market to get it to start functioning where demand and supply can at least equate uh, around a relatively stable price, which is what uh, investors, um, manufacturers, and indeed the general public require. And we've also traced incidents of banditry to the handiwork of illegal miners, especially foreign illegal miners. Some notorious foreigners who come to our nation sponsor banditry in the local areas with a view to driving away the local population and then moving in to start extracting exploration and extracting our minerals. It's technology that is helping us to decipher all of this. So we are investing more heavily in in injection of technology into our security architecture. And that's making a huge difference. Like I said, I mean... It's the same amount of money which... Uh the finance minister referred to. So it is not a different source. And um, it's a very big intervention and enlargement of an existing policy. Uh, we, the government is concerned, our president is concerned uh, that uh, no girl should be out of school for on grounds of poverty. And uh, particularly at the foundation level of pre-tertiary education, the basic education level in secondary schools. And um, under that scheme, we'll be having uh, close to 500 new schools across the country, especially in the participants.
Hello, hope you enjoyed the news. Please do subscribe to our YouTube channel and don't forget to hit the notification button so you get notified about fresh news updates.